Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Press Start TV. How you doing today? My name is Will, this is Nine. Yellow. We have Justin Wachowski with us today, and Mr. Gage. Hi. So, let's <laughs> talk about this. Today, we're actually gonna be talking about the Nintendo NX. Uh, we'll talk about the rumors, what's going on with that. We'll also be talking about Super Smash Con today, which is very exciting. Yay! Coming in August, right? So excited. Yeah, Whoop. So excited. I'm excited. I just didn't want to sound too yeah. loud on the radio. <laughs> we can blow out yeah. the microphones. It's okay. <laughs> so yeah, so Super Smash Con, very excited. We'll get into that here in just a little bit. Let's let's start off with Nintendo NX. So who knows most about this? That guy. Probably me. Okay, Gage. So, I wrote the board this week. <laughs> so, Gage, tell everyone who doesn't know what this is, what this is all about. So, Nintendo NX is basically Nintendo's next step in the video game world, which is their either their new console, their new handheld. We don't know much about it. We know that they've come out and said that Nintendo NX is a thing. Uh, we're not giving up on the Wii U or the 3DS just yet but we are doing something else, too. Well, they said they didn't want to start really pushing the NX until Wii customers were satisfied, satisfied with yeah. the Wii U. So. Well, they so. must be satisfied because this thing is supposed to launch Zelda, Smash Bros, and Mario Kart. I mean, they got it all now, so. That's not all. I mean, they don't have a Metroid game. They don't no. need a Metroid game. They absolutely need a Metroid game. <laughs> That's why it's not selling that, consoles. The last one wasn't that good. <laughs> well, it get someone else to do it. Anyway, this thing's supposed to launch in 2016, like around July. So they must be ready to move oh, on. Holy cow. Wait, yeah. launch? They said they weren't around. even going to talk about it until E3 next year. The rumor is launching next year. No it's, way. No. I, 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 I you can say no all you want. It's yeah. just the rumor. It's if a, it you can say whatever you want. It's going to be I say the rumor's fake. It's not going to be in the middle of the uh, summer. Yeah, it'll summer, be a November yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. For holiday yeah. seasons. October, right? November, somewhere in there. So didn't, well, didn't they launch the 3DS in uh, summer? Well, that's the not handheld. the same thing. But what if it is a handheld? We don't know. That's true. So, well, okay. Fair enough. Well, but one of the comments <laughs> that was made, or one of the rumors, was they're not trying to compete with the Xbox One or PS4 on a power level. Which right. Leads me to believe that this is a home console. Hey, yeah. Well, what if something they're other making the Wii U just in the gamepad? Why would they do that? People don't buy the Wii U because they don't know what the gamepad's for. They say, my Wii works fine. I don't need a gamepad for it. They don't understand it's a separate Then they console. can take the Wii U everywhere. And, yeah, and it could be its own thing. I think I it's mean, be it a would VR. be the next evolution in handheld gaming. Think about it. No. It could be VR. <laughs> it could be VR. It's the new thing. Everybody's big, doing it. I mean, ever since <laughs> Kinect and original it, Wii, you know, Microsoft yeah, motion and in Steam, general, right. VR or motion sensor could see it being. Because if you're talking about well, not I'm competing with power, then they're going to be competing with some well, that, other That's what worries advantage. me. If they're not competing with power, then they're trying to do another innovative, weird yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, you know, so they, which they do well. They do well. Most but of people, the time. They, I mean, yeah. the gimmick works once, and it didn't work the second time. So they're like, well, let's pull our hair out mm -hmm. a little bit. Let's figure out what's going on here. All right, and, and we're talking about this Nintendo NX thing. So if that's the case, Nine, what do they need to do in order to succeed? What does this thing have to do? It has, it has if it's not competing, <laughs> and if it's a new gimmick, like Gage was saying. Well, no, I'm saying it's not a new gimmick. That's what I'm saying, saying it's I would not. say go back to core gaming. Like, scratch the gimmick, scratch the motion control, and go back to just straight up core video games. So a home console, I put my, a controller in my hand. I mean, if they want to do the camera thing like everybody else with the Kinect and the PlayStation camera and whatnot, do that. Sure, that's great. Well, Reggie's come out and said he doesn't like VR. He thinks it's kind of not fun. Yeah. <laughs> he I doesn't like VR. I think if they really want to build their fan base back up to what it used to be, they need to go back to core gaming. Get that hardcore Star Fox game. Get that hardcore Zelda game. Get the hardcore Metroid game. They just released all that on the Wii U, though. Well, but we... They said that... Nobody ever said that the Zelda was strictly coming just to Wii. And we said this when the NX was not a lot, uh, right. launched or announced, announced. Um, that, that we think the Zelda game could go Wii like, U and NX like, the, like Twilight, Twilight Princess, Princess did. did. I think it's foolish for them not to compete on a power level because of technology, even since the Xbox This is the same company that came out and said, we don't need 1080p. Wrong. Exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't ever need to switch to discs. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, with technology's already come a little further from the PS4 and the Xbox One. Certainly, I, they can find a cheap way to get something a little more beefier. You'd think well, so, but but what? you've also got to take into account. Look at their core games graphics. Mario is a cartoony, fun-loving adventure. Well, right game. now they don't need the power because they're not producing high quality. They're not producing The Witcher. Well, you know? right. Yeah. They're not producing realistic-looking games. They're producing these highly. Brightly colored cartoony. Mario Maker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mario Maker, Yoshi Woolly World, Kirby. It's so who's our, tar who's our target audience? Kids. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How much do you, you need a leapfrog it's pad to, to entertain kids? Now they. Right? If they <laughs> had the right. Can you imagine the right amount of power behind? Like, 
Mario on a PS4 or Link on a PS4. It's funny you bring that up because somebody put Mario in Unreal 4 and it looks amazing. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Imagine that kind of a full You'd blown, like a gauge. drawn oh, yeah. gauge Is it Mario 64? produced in a AAA fashion with yes. that kind of power <laughs> behind it. Maybe they're just worried about the risk of doing something that new and different. They know I, the I would understand works. being worried about a risk, but they need to take they a risk. Take right a risk. Right I mean, they took a risk, risk with the gamepad. They took a risk with the yeah. first controls. Uh, they've taken risk before. Well, they need the to do something. The risk they took with the Wii was a good risk. It paid off in the end. Okay, so the risk with yeah. Nintendo was a massive thing. They they had it down, and they're known for pulling out those kind of things. But right. when the Wii U came out, it was the most powerful thing at the time. They tried to get third-party developers. They released mm -hmm. like Assassin's Creed and Batman and all these kinds of games. But they people still waited to buy them on the PS3 and the 360. Um, and which same is thing they're doing with the Wii U. So. And <laughs> well, see, they're not getting a third-party support on the Wii U. Right. So I think they might try and get on the NX. Uh, I, I ultimately I think the NX is going to be a home console. So that's you know straight black and white, uh, no gimmicks. So you can, and then it's going to have some cross-platform abilities there, a better online gaming service, and it's going to yeah. launch with it's huge important. titles to make people excited about Nintendo again. I, I agree with the online thing. I think that yeah. that's going to do a more be more of a front. But I think it's very foolish for them not to compete with the hardware. If they did have the hardware, they could get the third-party support. I, but if they're not looking for the games for like you know, The Witcher, if they're not looking for the campaign, they need to take a risk. Stuff. They need to do something. Uh, the risk Nintendo needs to take here is to not have a risk. To do something that everyone's doing. To go That's, back to core They have gaming. like a reverse risk. Go back to core gaming. Yeah. I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> the risk is give not the gimmicks. The give me the games. You're and saying I the success is in the brands they've built, getting the yes. franchises the out there franchise. rather than trying to blow you away. Yeah, and I don't want like a cutesy no, version of here's here's Zelda for like little miniatures. Look how cute like, they are. They right. sell amiibos. Right. I don't want that. We'll yeah. see what they do. It'll yeah. need to be seen. I think they need to make sure that they put some power behind it. That's my opinion anyway. We'll have more for you when we get back. We'll be talking about Super Smash kind of right after this. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. We just got done talking about the Nintendo NX. Now we're going to talk about Super Smash Con. Once again, I'm Will. This is Nine. Yo. You have Gage over there. Hey. And this is Mr. Justin Wachowski. What's Justin, um, you're the founder of Smash Con, right? That's right. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how did this all start? Yeah, well, uh, it's it's not that interesting of a story, but it, oh, it's crap. a little bit. <laughs> it involves no. Smash. Of course it's a different. Yeah, it's Smash. No, so uh, I've, I've been a uh, competitive Smash 64 player for probably about three or four years now. Um, been playing it since I grew up, like everybody else. But uh, like a lot of people in the competitive community, I have a very cliche story where basically thought I was the best person around. I was always using Kirby. I never lost to anybody that I knew. I was, you know, best in the world in my mind. And then <laughs> stumbled on some YouTube videos of like actual competitive smash. And it was just like mind blowing. It, yeah. was, it was like, oh my gosh, I'm horrible at this game that <laughs> yeah. I've played for 15 years. What have I done with my life for 10 <laughs> years, whatever. Um, so uh, to me, that was like actually more exciting than degrading because to me it was th this is my been my favorite game ever. It's it, hands down. Everyone asks my favorite game is it's Smash 64, hands down. Nice. And uh, to me, it was like this just got a huge like expansion pack. Here's all this advanced tech. Here's all this you know new community that sort of thing. Are so you talking about with melee or well with 64, just knowing that, that there there's more, more to there. it. Well, yeah, and more to the game that you know 90% of people who play it and think they're good, they don't even know how to do half the tech. That, yeah, they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, I don't know um, what I'm doing. I, <laughs> yeah, but um, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, so it uh, it's that was that was the the core passion is Smash and 64 specifically wanting to bring it to you know a new light to a new stage. And a lot of my experience in past and other business ventures is conventions and doing convention circuits, uh, being vendors, being sponsors, uh, getting to know uh, one organizer in particular that I worked with, and getting to know behind the scenes of how to run these massive shows, and. Um, so really just kind of both ideas collided late last year, I guess, you know, September, October to go for a kind of hybrid event where we host this incredible competitive tournament. Yeah, where so, but Smash as a whole though, you started off the 64, realized that there was competitive. Like, oh yeah, of there. course, but there's so there much melee, more with Melee. Oh yeah, draw. and yeah, frankly the 64 scene, as much as that pains me to say, is, is tiny compared to Melee, Brawl, Wii U, um, even PM, which is a uh, like uh, 
home-brewed version yeah. of Brawl. A it's better that's, version. Yeah, a lot of people like it a lot better. It was made basically, the reason it's Project M is it was made to be a mod that is faster than Brawl because a lot of people didn't like the speed. <coughs> but anyway, neither here nor there. Bottom line, yeah, so in, involving all these Smash communities, these fun competitive tournaments, these top players, you know, flying all over, people, you know, just play this game till their eyes fall down, and I'm it, one of them. It's become a massive thing. Yeah. I think any time that, that we do tournaments uh, or you see competitive gaming, you know, usually it's the regular, there's some games that are just made for it, like League of Legends, you know. Yeah, Dota. Dota, Dota yeah. Warcraft. Of course. Warcraft, sure. Warcraft. Yeah. 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 All the crafts. <laughs> then you have uh, the console games like Call of Duty, Halo, sure, uh, all those games. But Smash Brothers has has really has a very dedicated core following that people are just very much into it. It's kind of carved out its own niche. Yeah, well it's kind of a unique thing because the fighting game community in general, like Street Fighter, mm -hmm. has, a, has a massive esports history and everything with yep. it. Um, and th there's a lot of these other very niche games that are, you know, traditional fighters. And so Smash is kind of this interesting thing because it's not a traditional fighter. A lot of other gaming communities in the fighting game community specifically kind of look down on Smash as yeah. not being a real fighting game. And even game. the creator but says it's not a fighter. It's, right. it's a party brawler. game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then at the same time it doesn't fit in with like those games you just rattled off yeah. there. And so it's kind of this, this kind of weird amoeba phase where it's kind of casual, gets the general interest, but can be taken to those extremes of some of those niche games. So it's, it's a really cool thing. And so so what is your favorite Smash Bros. game? 64. 64. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mine, uh, Melee. Melee? Melee. Yeah. I don't play it. <laughs> that enough. was cool. You don't have a favorite? I, if I had to pick a favorite, I'd say 64, because it's the only one I've really uh, put default. any time yeah. into. I, I like the Wii U version actually. Yeah, the only, probably World. because it's prettier. But it's a solid yeah. game too. Uh, and, and but the competitive gamers I think gravitate towards melee. Melee is the, melee is definitely the biggest. Right. Yeah, the biggest scene. Uh, a lot of the the history of it going to the next level competitive lies with it. So a lot of people love that. Then you combine that with the nostalgia. But uh, we use no slouch. I mean, especially with how big of an audience it has, it is quite the competitive scene as well. But so um, SmashCon is a is a just a dedicated event just for Smash Brothers. Well, not just that so okay. this is where the other kind of background of convention and the just kind of part. a fun yeah the con <laughs> part so it uh it it kind of dawned on me and this is where it kind of was the the aha moment if you will uh late last year where i was like okay we'll do this big smash tournament with everything you know get prizes and everything get every, get all of that taken care of but also this is a sweet excuse to have just an in general you know fan of nintendo convention because you know what better game to right. you know put all of those brands together than Smash. It's just the perfect medley of all of the history of Nintendo. Sure. So it is, uh, it's a sweet excuse to have an incredible event where we're going to have everything you'd expect at a normal con, like uh, marketplace of vendors, you know, free-to-play consoles, arcades, things like that. But we're also going to have some really unique things, too, like a, uh, a lot of really cool music, specifically. We're going to have a, an orchestra come in and do video game music. We're going to have a you know, big band. We've got small ensembles. And then uh, one of the most unique things uh, probably is actually uh, parkour group <laughs> is, uh, what were you going to say? Press start. Hey, oh. <laughs> of course, yeah. No, but we're actually uh, having a parkour group come and do live stunts. They're going to basically bring Smash to life in costume, awesome. jumping That's around. Really cool. like, That's my first yeah, time here. Yeah, so there, right? it's, uh, I don't know if I'm Kirby. <laughs> no, but it's, it's going to be it's going to be pretty sweet. It's all about so, Kirby. A lot, a lot of fun stuff. And then on top of all of it, it's just a great excuse to spotlight the Smash community. People, you know, off the street who didn't even know there's a competitive community like me five years ago will be able to witness this kind of esports atmosphere and these crowds and all these gamers. Cool. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, I think what we should do is get into some more details about SmashCon right when we get back and we'll cover like, you know, who can compete, how you compete, you know, date sure. time, all that kind of stuff. A lot of we'll session. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. Hey everybody, welcome back. We're going to continue to talk about Super Smash Con coming August this year and we're here with Will, Nine, Justin, and Gage. Um, so, and by the way, you're watching and listening to Press Start TV. So, Justin, let's continue to talk about some of the uh, events of, yeah, absolutely. of the Smash Con. So, 
Uh, what console will you guys be playing on? Is, is it just one console that players can compete on? No, there'll, there'll be a full-fledged tournament for all iterations of the game, nice. uh, from 64 to Melee to Brawl to Wii U, both singles and doubles. So, yeah, we, we're going to have it all. Double yeah. tournament? Double tournament. <laughs> Double tournament. There you go. <laughs> Team press start. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Team last place. <laughs> because of me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So very cool. So uh, that way you can kind of take away anybody's argument. Oh, it's not on this console, though. Right. What yeah. about the controllers? Is it just the native controller, or is there any mod controllers? No, like generally it's just the the stock controller. Uh, we we're staying away from wireless controllers because of of interference, and then when they desync with consoles, they can turn off and interrupt games, things like that. So that would be the only kind of iteration otherwise. But um, yeah, generally just your classic N64 controller, GameCube controller. Just bring it out. Um, or uh, we'll have some on on site, but most gamers definitely are they partial are, to their own sticks. Their own yeah, own so if they're eroded in the right places. Yeah, my thumb. exactly. <laughs> what about the rules? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so it's a it's a basic double elimination setup. Um, it's each game has different sets of rules because each game flows differently. Sure. So, for example, Melee is four stocks, whereas Brawl and Wii U are less stocks progressively as well because they're slower and it's. It's the whole idea is that sets are similar amounts of time, and you don't want, you know, to play the same amount of stocks because a brawl match would take, you know, four times as longer as a melee match. But yeah, the big thing is no items, though. Uh, for a lot of casuals, I know that's a big part of the fun of Smash, but it's a lot of all pokeballs. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, but in the competitive community, it's all one v one, no items. You want to take all variation out of it, all luck we'll out of it, it just keep it to to the mind game, games, to the strat, uh, to the the strategy, yeah. to the the tech. Yeah. Um, so where is SmashCon? I know a lot of people want to know about that. They're yeah, right. yeah, of course. Logistics. Yeah. First off, <laughs> August 6th through 9th, so coming up real soon here. Uh, it's in the Dallas Expo Center, so 100,000 square feet, just incredibly fun stuff. It's in Chantilly, if you don't know where the Dallas Expo Center is. In Virginia. In Virginia. Yeah. Our course. backyard. Yep. Yeah. So uh, just off 28, just south of the Dallas Airport, <laughs> if you know where that is, just yeah. a few miles south of there. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, how much is it for people to enter the tournament? So there's uh, different amounts based on what you want to enter. So there's a set registration fee. The way the structure works is, uh, like a lot of conventions, you get a weekend pass. And so that has a set price of $75. And that gives you all access pass to everything from being uh, there to be there for the panels and things that go on after hours. Um, and then as well, that allows you to enter the tournament. And then for the tournament, it's $10 per additional game that you want to enter. So you go through supersmashcon.com. It's all there, pretty easy to walk through. Um, and you pick, you know, I want to enter 64 singles. I want to enter melee doubles, et cetera. And that money, 100% uh, goes towards the prize pool. So that's the reason there's a fee there, is, is to keep up in the prize pool, cool. keep it fun. Yeah. And again, you got Will, Nine, Justin, and Gage here. We're talking about Super Smash Con. For the radio listeners. 2015. Um, yeah. So the prizes, how many people can, or how many places will you award prizes to? It's actually not 100% finalized yet, but it will be somewhat of a standard breakdown. We're just going through kind of their. There are a couple schools of thought of what other tournaments have done, whether you stack it more towards the top or whether you go out. But whatever it is, it will end up being pretty standard. But okay. um, generally, you'll need to place top eight to get any sort of serious money. But uh, additionally, it's worth noting, uh, if you're not, you know, want to register for the whole weekend, if that sounds expensive, if you're no, you know, interested in Smash or interested in Nintendo or some of these other things we were talking about, uh, but it's not for you to, you know, stay all weekend and, and pay all that. We've got day passes too, so the public will be coming out Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and you'll still be able to come out, you'll be able to see the music, you'll be able to see the vendors, the arcades, some of the panels, uh, we've got giant controllers people will be able to play with, all sorts oh. of cool stuff. A hall of games, kind of walking through a lot of historical uh, gaming history. So, historical gaming history, that's a little uh, it's repetitive. Like a negative yeah, too. there you go. So, but yeah. What can you tell, like, some of, for all the competitive gamers out there that are super pumped about this, they're going to show up, what can you tell them? Like, a lot of people come out for just fun, some people are really serious about their competitive gaming. What can you tell just the average player that wants to enter a tournament like this? Mm -hmm. Should they just come out and have fun? Yes, they practice? What, absolutely. What they well, all I can relate to is my, my tournament experience. So, of course, you have to, you know, go to your first tournament. If it's something that you're interested in, your first thought, I mean, we get emails about this all the time, is I'm not a professional gamer. I, you know, I play with my friends. <laughs> Stay and home. They're so timid and they're like, should I come? Like, is it going to be fun? And I'm, I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Because two things. One, 
It's fun. I mean, you just got to so come enjoy the atmosphere. There's so much other stuff going on. And you're going to meet two, new Smash players. You're going to meet yeah. new Smash players. You're going to find out, you know, how to get better. You, it, the classic thing in Smash is you have to get beat down by someone before, you know, to really open your eyes to Spike see club. how to get better. <laughs> yeah, you, you go in, <laughs> you get four-stocked, and you go, you hang your head in shame for about 30 seconds and then realize, well, okay, this is actually really cool. What did you just do? How can I get into that and start to get better? Sure, sure. Robert Paulson's going to be in the next Smash Bros. Oh, jeez. <laughs> DLC <laughs> coming soon. So, so, I mean, should players have just one go-to character? Should they have a backup character depending on what other people pick? Can you pick your, you can pick your own character? Yeah, you can, all characters are, are available. Um, that is, again, it's just different for each game and different schools of thought. So, like, myself personally in 64, I've got uh, a handful of characters that I can play at a pretty similar level. And so, really, it'll be a lot of matchups that I'll play. You know, if I play someone, lose a match to their character, I'll counterpick to a different character that I think might have an advantage. Which but, characters? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my best prepare. characters are probably uh, Falcon, Mario, Pikachu, Kirby, and Link. It's almost a half. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a small cast, so you right. get to know a lot of it. But, uh, but yeah, there are other people though that are die-hard, cannot play any other than you know, I'm Pikachu. That's my guy. Yeah. Go for it. Mm -hmm. Well, Both Justin, well. SmashCon sounds great. Um, we're we're awesome so excited. We're going to be out there, by the way. We, we're going to cover the event for you. We're going to try to bring as yeah, many people awesome. as we can. Um, competitive gaming on the rise, and like you <laughs> said, this is the perfect same excuse <laughs> to get together yeah. and, and just <laughs> celebrate Nintendo. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if you want to know more about that, you can check out SmashCon. SuperSmashCon.com. Uh, we're on Facebook and Twitter, all your classic stuff. But SuperSmashCon.com has all the info. You can get day passes there. You can get weekend registrations there. You can learn more about the detailed stuff happening, costume contests, etc. But Awesome. That's all the time we have for you today. Until next time, see ya. Bye. Later.